Hey guys, my name is Derek Lambert. And I'm a felon. I wear it as a badge of honor. I know it sounds stupid, right? Like, who the hell wears a felony charge as a badge of honor? Well, it saves people's lives and it helps people who've been there. You're not alone if you've had one or have one. You understand where I'm coming from. At the same time, this is to help those who don't have them. Maybe you want to stay away because it is hell to pay in many ways. Still hope isn't gone because you can overcome so many things. The mind is a powerful tool. At the same time, this is here to help you. Hey guys, let's not do that shit if you can. Drugs are a hell of a thing. How South Park put it? Drugs are bad. Acquired a felony charge about five years ago. Obviously, if you haven't seen my channel, hit that like and subscribe button. You guys can get to know me a lot better if you watch all my content. But I'm a recovering addict. I have three and a half years clean. So just because I got a charge didn't mean I quit, if that makes sense. I had uh, caught a larceny charge five years ago, approximately, while I was out there in active addiction. And I don't just uh, suffer from addiction to heroin. I also suffer from addiction to other substances such as alcohol, you name it. I could pretty much say that I like or have tried that substance. Everything from cocaine, I've tried obviously the ecstasy pills, mushrooms, alcohol, any type of opioid you can just about imagine, I've done. And uh, it used to be just snorting, it turned into where I was injecting heroin. But I want to get into my charge about uh, this felony charge that I caught, a larceny charge. I ran my own business for a long time and I was welcomed into a lady's house that was very sweet. She was very, very good to me. And uh, I ended up going and doing a bid to cut down trees for her. In fact, the bid was, I mean, it was a really good bid. I, I had made a lot of money from it. In fact, I made about $4,600 is what I bid it for. It was 17 smaller pine trees. We went, cut them, removed the debris, and turned around and grinded the stumps. And then I had to do a little bit of uh, leveling of some of the land, some grading, if you will, in a small area. It didn't take long. I used little rakes just to rake the dirt and make it smooth. I get paid for that, and I profited about $4,200. This was in two to three days. So I had all this money, I was drinking during this time period, and I was doing the testosterone that I usually was doing at the time. So if you want, check out my channels. I do need to do more content on my steroid addiction and steroid use. However, when I would take the testosterone, whether it was over-the-counter stuff from Steers Nutrition, which is super potent stuff, which the FDA finds out after nine months and removes it off the damn shelf because it's so potent and they find out that it has actual qualities of real steroids in it, um, it didn't matter if it was injectable or not. I would change, my mind would change, the way I thought would change, I'd get more aggressive, I thought higher of myself, my head would grow as my body would too, I'd get real strong. And um, me and the wife weren't together, so here I am, I'm on all the apps, you know, I'm on Tinder, I'm on POF, I'm on, you name it, and I'm hitting up girls and whatnot, and then going to the bars. I had all this money, so I'm drinking my ass off. I'm meeting all these girls, doing all this dumb stuff, and uh, you know, typical guy stuff. And I'm doing this lady's house, if you will. She needed another bid done. Now, mind you, I'm an alcoholic. If you know what an alcoholic is, good. If you don't, um, I'm surprised that someone doesn't know what an alcoholic is in this day and age, but someone who obviously cannot stop drinking, and it has affected my life in an extremely negative way that even when bad things happen, I still kept drinking. I couldn't stop. You know, a problem drinker would obviously be someone when a problem happens, they would stop to get rid of the problem, and they're able to. I kept going. I'm at this lady's house, She's letting me do some work inside her house, and she said, I have to go to the rehab for my husband. He's older, and um, you know his health isn't so great, so please, uh, if you will, just continue working. If you have any problems, call me. And I asked her, I said, do you have anything to drink? <clears throat> now, she was cool, very open, very cool. I said, do you have any beer? She said, yeah, I've got some German beer. She was a German lady. So I go in the fridge. She says, have all of it. 
Well, she doesn't know that I'm an alcoholic, so I start drinking and I drink all these beers from her house. I had a gentleman named Victor that was working with me. He's a Mexican guy. And um, he had roommated with me during this time when the wife left. And he also uh, was drinking here and there, but he had this clever idea. Hey, she's not here. Amigo, look, shows me all this stuff. She has jewelry sitting around. This lady had money sitting around. She had uh, medicine. Now get this, I was so addicted to the alcohol because that's just the kind of way I am. Not everybody's the same, you'll figure this out. I was addicted to the alcohol and enjoyed the alcohol so much, I didn't care to mix drugs. So I was an alcoholic who drank alcohol and only cared for alcohol when I drank it. This lady had pain medicine, Narcos. This is the first time I've ever seen Narcos, okay? I've seen Vicodin and Percocet, but never Narcos. I don't know why. Little specks in the white pills, or little red specks. So I ended up taking a whole bunch of those, but not all of them. She won't find out. Took a bunch of her money, but not all of it. She won't find out, she's older. She seemed like she was getting to that point where she was forgetful and all that. I wasn't right. This tells you that I had put thought into this. The way I thought was sick. And he and I both had taken stuff out of her house. And I went that same day when I was drunk by that afternoon and pawned something at the pawn shop, like a dummy. And they ended up catching me. And came to my house two, three days later because she had found a bunch of missing stuff was missing from her house. So she did, she called the cops, they investigated, they checked and saw that I had been to a pawn shop and pawned, I guess, her husband's ring. And this is, a, this is a gentleman who had served in the United States military. This is someone who I truly do honor. You know, I honor our soldiers, I really do. I have a lot of respect for our, the military, especially being my father was a Green Beret. And I ended up going to jail. I played it off as best I could, but I had known I had a severe issue with the drinking and had really made a serious mistake. So I hire a lawyer and the lawyer tells me to go down to the courthouse and obviously before that he told me, Derek, you need to try and get all the, the stuff that went missing from her house back to us so we can get it to the, to the cops and they'll drop down some of the stuff that you stole. Well, I had very few things that I had in my possession that was hers. And I was wondering, how did all these things on this list go missing? I guess the, the guy that was with me. Well, I never turned him in. Everything was all on me. So I took all the charges. I had never returned anything because it wasn't really much to return. After that, he had already gotten rid of a bunch of stuff at the pawn shops, or not the pawn shop, sorry, the flea market pawn shops. So there's like a place where you could go, you didn't need an ID. He had a connection that I guess could take this stuff and never need identification attached to it. And so that really screwed me because I couldn't return the stuff he took. And I never threw him under the bus, I just took the hit. He told me to go to court and just plead guilty and get it over with, it wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't realize how big of a deal this really was. I end up going to court, pleading guilty, and I had already moved my family to try and get clean. I moved to Washington State. And when I moved to Washington State, I had to go back for court. All the way across the country. I went back for court, pled guilty, and they put me on probation. Well, they didn't want to let me leave the state. My family's up here in Washington State, and I'm all the way in North Carolina, and they wouldn't let me leave the state. So I'm trying to work something out, but I'm also trying to keep my mind clean. I had already been going to meetings. I've been sober all that stuff. My wife decides she's not gonna wait any longer. She comes to North Carolina. When she gets to North Carolina, that's when I had a tooth problem and went to the dentist. They pulled the tooth and sure enough, I go from Percocets and right back all the way to heroin this time. And I ended up on heroin for a year. I was on heroin with a felony charge, first offense I had ever gotten. And I am fighting for my life. Someone called DSS on me, so I was about to lose my three kids. I had, my truck was about to be repossessed because I couldn't afford it. I had uh, this felony charge, so I couldn't find a good job. It was very difficult and all that. And I literally felt hopeless, completely hopeless. I didn't know what to do. That's when I ended up at a friend in recovery's house who had known my father. and. Thank God that I knew them from the times I tried to get clean before and sober. 
and I ended up going and getting the help that I needed. But I wanted to make this video so you guys could see my first time ever getting a charge in my entire life and how it was related to substances and alcohol. I would have never done something like that if I was sober and clean because my mind would have been clear. I wouldn't have needed to do something like that. I could easily ask for money or ask for help. Someone would have helped. Even if it was my own family or someone else, this lady probably would have helped. I felt this big. I felt this big. I pled guilty. I took the whole blame. I paid back society, of course, and I got my head on as you well know today, being three and a half years clean. But I wanted to make this specific video so that you guys could get an insight to my personal um, experience in that field. I love you guys, three and a half years clean, like, subscribe. I hope you guys liked the video because this is exactly what happened to me and I ended up getting this charge. So if you're a felon and you're like, oh man, I have no hope in all this, don't feel, don't feel like you're alone. You could still get a job don't give up. I'm putting out applications all day, every day anyway, today. And I have steady flow of income, but it's not like the income I'd like to get. So I'm always trying to pursue better. So that being said, if you think, oh man, I'm never going to get a job because I have charges. Think again, keep applying, keep looking, don't give up. I'm telling you, you will get there just like I did. Big D here, laying it like it is and keeping it 100 with you. I love you guys. And thanks a lot for listening. Peace.